Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode we are checking out the latest development for the uh, G36 Improvement Project. This mod is something that I've been following for a very long time and it just keeps getting better every single time it gets an update and today I'm going to show you why. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Alright, so first off, what is the G36 Improvement Project? This is another one of those projects that takes a default aircraft from Microsoft Flight Simulator and brings it much, much closer to real world specifications. Now, a link for this will be found in the description below, so don't worry about trying to copy it out of the uh, address bar up there. I will have a link down below for it. This is version uh, 6 or 0.6.6, .6, and here is the changelog. Now, there's a couple things specifically that I want to bring to your attention on this one. Uh, the biggest one is new spark plug fouling. Uh, if you don't correctly, both on the ground or in the air, uh, adjust your mixture, you run the risk of fouling up your spark plugs. Um, that is, I'm in a lot of trouble, guys. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm in a ton of trouble because I am terrible about adjusting my mixture when I should. Uh, so uh, we'll see what happens here, and uh, you guys will likely be with me uh, today when we do something dumb. Now, I am going to be paying attention a little bit more, so hopefully I can avoid any of that. But basically, long story short is if you foul up your spark plugs, you're going to find yourself with loss of RPM and engine power. Um, so obviously that's something to be concerned about. The other one that I want to bring to everyone's attention is this one right here is reworked engine performance figures. After more than 30 hours of testing, the engine performance figures match the pilot's operational handbook. Check this out. 2.22 knots of true airspeed on the altitude spectrum. So what that means is, is that this aircraft's airspeed and engine performance is so closely modeled to the real world aircraft that even as your as your altitude changes and climbs all the way up to I would imagine aircraft ceiling down to ground level the airspeed uh, should be within approximately 0 0.22 knots of the real world pilots operational handbook and specifications to this aircraft that is fantastic that is absolutely amazing that is some serious accuracy right there so this should be a lot of fun to fly all right so let's go ahead and move on and let's get into the aircraft here now the other thing is according to the installation instructions it you do want to install the uh, working titles annex i uh, g1000 and again that can be found on the marketplace it is a free upgrade uh, so i would recommend doing so as it is recommended here uh, now let's make sure we have flight controls free and clear here before i try to do a startup here uh, I'm not seeing any activity on these rudder pedals here. Mm, 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 mm. Let me peek on down here. Nope, they are absolutely not moving. Give me a second. This has been an issue since Sim Update 5. My rudder pedals randomly disconnect, and it's only my rudder pedals. See, there they are. And what's even more odd is I have to disconnect them, I have to unplug them, I have the Thrustmaster TPR rudder pedals. I have to unplug them and plug them back in. The only way that the Microsoft Flight Simulator will recognize them. Mind you, I just started Microsoft Flight Simulator a couple of minutes before starting this video, so it's not like it's been on and timed out. And this is the, if I go into Microsoft, or go into the Windows controls, uh, the rudder pedals show as connected and active, you know, powered on, etc. And if I use anything else, DCS World, X-Plane 11, doesn't matter, the rudder pedals work just fine. But I can literally go directly from DCS World, where the rudders are working fine, go into Microsoft Flight Simulator, and nothing. I have to unplug and plug them back in. So ridiculous. And again, that started about Sim Update 5, been driving me crazy. Anyway, my little rant there for the video, I gotta have one, right? Okie dokie, let's see if I remember how to start this. We're not gonna necessarily go completely by the book, but I'm gonna do my best to, to keep it as realistic as possible. So there's battery one, battery two. Uh, alternator one, alternator two. Oh, no, no, never mind. I don't want that until we're ready to start the engines. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 pedo heat. Let's turn on that beacon light. Let everyone know we're getting ready to start. Nav lights can come on as well. 
Cow flaps need to be open for engine start. Uh, where's our fuel handle? There it is right there, you slippery devil. Are you on? We are on the left tank. That's fine. All right, let's peek out here. Ooh, look at how pretty it is. The NXI is really pretty. It really does look nice. Wow, that is a major adjustment. Look at that. Holy crap. Anyway, all right. Well, it's actually very handy because you used to have to turn on the avionics in order to get your engine gauges, which isn't true to real life. Uh, your avionics simply won't come on until your engine start, which I should probably do before we wear the batteries out. Um, okay, so we're looking around. Nobody's out there. Let's pop that window open. I don't even know if you really can. But uh, windows open, clear prop. All right, and Magneto one and two, and give the engine a crank. Oh, fail. Hang on. Let's try that again. Mixture full, prop full, throttle cracked. Let's try that again, do it the right way, shall we? Oh, she doesn't want to come to life from me. There she goes. Oh, nope, I thought I heard her. One more time. There she is. There she is. All right, let's bring it down to about 1,000 RPMs on the idle. Oh, listen, it just sounds great. I don't know if they've adjusted the sounds or not, but it sounds fantastic. All right, so now alternator one, alternator two, avionics master can now come on. Do, do, do. That sure sounds like it's on, but it's not. Alright, do, 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 do. Now, we should not need the cow flaps for takeoff. Um, we're in Tucson, Arizona. Nice and warm outside. I don't think we'll need that. Uh, let's set our barometric pressure. Get that locked in. Let's set our transponder code. Do, 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 do. We're just going to do some VFR flying. Look at that. Already set for us. How nice. And let's set that to on. We'll set that to altitude reporting once we're ready for takeoff. Okay, um, not going to worry about the autopilot today. We're just going to fly it ourselves, have a good time with it. Because this aircraft is just too much fun to fly. And uh, let me get the old head tracker turned on, guys, and we're going to get out of here. Oh. So I think the page up key is bound to my avionics master. I was, I was having an issue last night? I think it was last night. With the... Um, H145, where the avionics master didn't turn on. And I actually think it's my hotkey for OBS that's doing it. Son of a gun. The things we learn, huh? Okay, so other than that, we're still good to go, though. Uh, let's uh, let's lean out that mixture and see what we got going on here. So let's bring our mixture back. And what we're going to be doing is watching the RPMs. We want them first. They sh Well, there it is. There's the drop. So at the point we start losing RPMs, like right there, I'm going to bring a little mixture back in. Huh. Let me get it back to a thousand here. Or at least stable. Right about there, it looks like. So you want to find what you'll sometimes see. Is you go to pull the mixture off, depending on what altitude you're at. Pull the mixture off. You may see the RPMs rise a little bit. At that point, you're going to keep pulling back until you see them drop. Once you see the RPMs drop, my understanding is the trick is then you just add a little bit right back into it again until you get back to where you were. So we should be good right about there. And uh, let's get rid of that old parking brake. Huh. Interesting, the parking brake wasn't on. Alright, let's take it for a flight, I guess. Uh, oh, taxi light would be helpful. There we go, that's better. 
Nose wheel steering on the ground is absolutely fantastic. You know, I should probably check our wins today. Uh, 310. Do, 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 do. 310, that's going to be runway 29 or right. Of course it is. I say of course it is because I always get 29 or right, which of course is at the other end of the airport. It's a good thing Tucson's a small airport. But even then, 29 or right slash 11 left is still an 11,000 foot runway. Used to be a part of Strategic Air Command back in the 60s, I think it was. Used to have, uh, I think it was B-36s come out of here. There was a warehouse right behind us there uh, where, uh, um, gosh, why can't I think of it? B-24s used to get uh, repaired and built out there. I think it was back there over my left shoulder, if I remember correctly. My grandfather used to work out there. Uh, so we had B-24 Liberators coming out of here for a while. We've had B-36s out of here, B-52s. Um, let's see here. What else? Now it's the Air National Guard, so we get F-16s. That's what those uh, covered parkings right over my left shoulder there are. And then, obviously, we have AMARC, uh, the world's largest storage yard. Uh, it's either world's largest or second largest. I always want to say the largest, but for some reason I'm thinking maybe it's the second. And I think I've been corrected on that like two or three times. I always forget whether or not it's actually the largest. A lot of people mistake it for the boneyard too. Now uh, there's two, you got two different uh, facilities out there. One is the storage yard and where the aircraft are mothballed and then uh, brought back up, can be brought back up to flight status. And I, I think the turnaround is either 48 or 72 hours. They can have these mothballed aircraft back up in airborne. It's very, very fast. Um, and then on the other side of the road is next. It was called Kolb. On the other side of the of there's an overpass over there. We'll go fly over there in a minute. Uh, then there's the boneyard, uh, where the aircraft are actually torn down, broken down, and and, and scrapped out for parts. Um, so it really depends on on where you are. We got a little bit of everything out there, but uh, that's attached to Davis Monthan Air Force Base, uh, which again was the was the SAC Air uh, Air Base Strategic Air Command. Uh, was actually Davis Monthan, but that's literally. I mean, we can see the tower from here. Um, and then uh, you also have Pima Air Museum. That's out there. It's a very nice. Uh, it's not the largest by any means, but it's it's a very very well done air museum. I think it operates strictly on donation, as I know many of them do. Um, but there's a bunch of really cool aircraft. We actually just recently, when I say recently, I want to say within the last ten years, I think it is, uh, actually received a B-36 out there. And uh, for those of you who don't know what a B-36 is, go to Google and look it up. It's a really, really odd-looking bomber. All the propellers are in the back of it. Um, so it's in a push configuration. Uh, but big plane. Big freaking plane. Uh, I think it was the first aircraft to ever back up, if I remember correctly. It's the first one to have reverse props on it. If I remember. If I remember. I, I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it was. That's what we're going to have to do one day, guys. We're going to get our live streams going again. We're going to get our group flights going again. Now that the, uh, the holidays are over, the, the world can start settling down again for me. And I'm sorry all that stopped, guys. Just, man, it got tough there for a while. It really did. Really got really got difficult. I, just, I had too much going on, and there just weren't enough hours in the day. Um, I'd like to get the Reno race going. We're going to have that uh, within the next few weeks. Finally have a battle plan for that. Um, I'm going to do a, uh, we're going to make that a, um, what's what I'm looking for? Fundraiser. Um, I'm trying to do a fundraiser for something like, uh, just flight or, uh, is it just flight? First flight. I can't remember what it is. There's, it's one of the, uh, programs that takes, uh, students with the, you know, uh, accelerated grade levels or something like that, or accelerated grades. Um, uh, they take them up flying, um, I, uh, right flight. That's what it was called. Right flight for me. Um, really awesome program. Um, I don't know that they still do it anymore. And with all of the, uh, you know, the craziness involved around COVID and, you know, I'm sure that hinders things even further. Let's go ahead and set flaps for takeoff. Oh, there we go. Not going to worry about a run up or anything. We're just going to have some fun. Just going to fly this beautiful aircraft. She's so much fun to fly and fly guys. 
Uh, let's see. You know what I haven't looked at, though? Let's see what the checklist shows. Do, do, do. I want to see. Oh, there's the takeoff run up, takeoff final items. This is a really extensive. There we go. Flaps up over 124 knots. Confirm that they're up. Landing gear are up at positive rate. Rotation speed is noted. Rotation speed for 3,600 pounds. Flaps up at 73 knots. Or flaps up equals 73 knots. Uh, approach flaps going to be 67 knots. So we're going to be looking at 67 knots for rotation. Let's see what our weight is. Verify if that's actually accurate. That was at 3,600 pounds. We're only at 2,500 pounds. So we can probably expect, I would guess, wheels up by 55 knots. Or uh, rotation at 55 knots. So that's what we're going to shoot for today. Um, not going to dive into all the, the calculations and all that yet. I am just want to feel the way she flies. She sounds great, though. I love the way this aircraft sounds. And she's a fast plane, man. Really pretty, too. I like this livery. They did a great job with it. All right. There's our runway. Let's bring her right on over here. We'll hold short the runway and uh, get ready for takeoff. So holding our brakes here. We're going to step on downstairs for a second. We're going to get our landing lights turned on. Taxi light can come off. Make sure our strobe light's turned on for takeoff. Pedo heat for takeoff. We need to step on down to the NXI for a second and change our transponder to altitude reporting. And let's get this beautiful lady out of here. I think I might have. There we go. Changed my view a little too much. line up and just in case we need it we're going to give that heading knob a tap line it up with our takeoff runway here and let's go to max power listen to that sound it sounds beautiful airspeed alive and indicating fifty five knots rotating Wow, that was almost 75 knots. Interesting. There she goes. Came off runway heading a bit. Let's pull those RPMs back. Get out of the red. Come down to about 2,500 RPMs. Three hundred feet AGL or retract the flaps. Flaps coming up. Those sounds are fantastic. Textures look great. She flies like a freaking dream.
playing around with the mixture a little bit. We're going to go for 22 inches on manifold pressure. 25 inches or uh, 2,500 pounds on the RPMs. Hello. I try to get close enough that way I can be comfortable knowing that you guys can see everything. But then I can't see what's going out the freaking window. Which just sort of defeats the purpose of VFR flying. There's also a G36 hanger specifically for our pretty lady here. I haven't checked that out yet, but I did read about it. Oops. Bumped the uh, prop. See there, passing through 140 knots now. Trying to trim for level flight. It's trying to trim for 4,000. She cruises, man. There's Davis Monthan Air Force Base that we've discussed. All right, start with a little cut there. Had to get some dinner. I think my hardest part with VFR flying is managing altitude. I tend to dip and, and rise a lot, especially in the turns. I do okay as long as I'm tr staring at the instruments, but if I try to just look out the window like you're supposed to, I tend to dramatically change pitch. All right, so there's the storage yard. Pretty much all of these aircraft uh, can very quickly be put back into service. There are some that are cut down over there, like you can see some of the, uh, the carcasses there. C-17s and C-5s, there's B-52s right under us. I'm not sure what those guys are. Uh, Chinooks maybe? Can't really tell, it looks like it. Some of them are a little hard to tell. Maybe KC-135s? Old Hercules? Lots of Hercules. So we got F-16s. Pretty impressive. There's a Galaxies. God, that's a big freaking plane, man. Nothing like that AN-225, but that Anatol-225 is... Ugh. That is a lot of freaking airplane. And it's the largest aircraft in the world, if memory serves. Alright, so... Flat and simple, guys. This mod is absolutely fantastic. The aircraft will cruise very comfortably. Um, 150, 160 knots, depending on weather conditions. Keep in mind, also, we're really low. We're only at 3,700 feet. Okay, so get this thing up to 10, 15,000 feet, and she'll take off like a bullet. Um, you know, or higher. So I think she's got a ceiling of 20 or 25, memory serves. I can't remember. I'd have to go back and look at the specifications on it, but... 
such a fun plane to fly. She's fast, she's nimble, she's maneuverable, um, she's comfortable, if you will. Um, nice big cockpit, got good legs on her. Let's uh, swap the tanks over. Nope, there we go. And let's bring it back in for a landing. So we're gonna go back to full prop, start pulling some RPMs back. For 18 inches or so. I guess we'll go ahead and pull the prop back. Pulled it back too soon. That makes sense. It's kind of weird now that I have to pay attention. These improvement mods are so fantastic. I love them. These teams that put these together are just wonderful. We're looking for 80 knots on the approach today. Rotation was just under 70. Keep it simple. Did I lose my airport? Nope, there it is. Right where it's supposed to be. And 22 knots to go flaps one. Be coming in straight in for two nine or right. Gear coming down. So we're just trying to maintain altitude at this point. A little early to descend yet. All right, let's look for full flaps. Power coming off. Make sure back to, or prop back to full. Make sure to full. There's 80 knots on the approach. Oh my god, I'm about to pull a Harrison Ford. Too soon? Lined up with the taxiway. That might have been too soon, huh? That was a little harsh. My bad. Man, it takes a lot to keep her in the air, though. She wants to fall out of the sky. There she goes. Man, that would have been bad, huh? Alright. Power off. Flare up. Oof! A little rough. A little rough. But not too bad. Not too bad. Alright. Well, guys, that is the G36 Improvement Project modification. Um, obviously, that is a really, really high-level demonstration of it, um, but more just giving you guys my feel of the aircraft. Um, she's powerful. She's fast. She's tricky. She uh, requires quite a bit of pilot input, which I like. What's the point of doing a simulation if you don't actually have to fly the aircraft? Um, really fantastic. I really, 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 really enjoy this aircraft. I always have. Um, and it's really nice when uh, when I see this mod up updated. I always jump all over this one. Um, it just it is absolutely that fantastic. So make sure you guys give it a shot. Let me know what you guys think of this mod down in the comment field below. And as always, folks, stay safe and healthy. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, guys.